Hi everybody and welcome back to A Dinosaur in the Library. Thank you for showing up again. And if this is your first time here, welcome to my weird little kingdom and you're about to hear me ramble about books for about nine minutes. And I say nine minutes because my phone has been cutting me off at just a little over nine minutes. So I may be talking a little fast. Uh, hopefully I will still get everything in. Uh, we'll see. So I, I'm doing the Classics book tag, which I found at Sam's channel, Novels and Nonsense. And she did not create the tag, and I cannot remember the creator's name. But I'll be linking her channel and the creator's channel below, so you can go check them out. I love Sam. Go check her channel out. She's awesome. And she loves classics, which is why she did this tag. And I like classics, too. Not as much as she does, I don't think. But um, I do like classics, so I decided to go ahead and do this. But I have two things to say at, uh, at the beginning. Number one is I played fast and loose with the term classic on a couple of these answers. So be aware. And number two is I am not a person who subscribes to the there is a list of 10, 20, or 100 books that you have to read in order to be well read and civilized and blah, 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 blah. Not at all. Um, I'm going to ramble about that in my next video because Andy Miller talks a lot about stuff like that in The Year of Reading Dangerously and it got me thinking about books, book culture, and reading culture. Um, and I really want to talk to you guys about it. So that will probably be up sometime this week. And other than that, I'm going to get started so that my phone doesn't cut me off. Uh, number one, an overhyped classic you did not like. Catcher in the Rye. I read it in high school. It was okay. Reread it again afterward. Not as okay. Uh, I do like J.D. Salinger's short stories, though, so it is just the book. Uh, and anything by Jane Austen. I've read her, and I've read a couple of books more than one time to give her a fair shake. Can't deal with her. Sorry, guys. Number two, your favorite time period to read about. I'm going to go with Victorian England because I read a lot of steampunk, time travel, steampunk, sci-fi, and that's where they go. And so that's the one I read about the most, and I really actually enjoy it. So, uh, Number three, your favorite fairy tale. That's uh, Alice in Wonderland, and I guess that counts as a fairy tale. Um, but I love all permutations, retellings, things that tie into Alice in Wonderland. I think they're awesome. Number four, most embarrassing classic you haven't read. This ties into what I said before. I'm not actually embarrassed that I haven't read this. I'm just kind of upset with myself that I haven't read it because I've just really been wanting to read it. And it's supposed to be amazing. And that's The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Number five is the top five classics you'd like to read soon. Number one is Mouse and Mouse 2 by Art Spiegelman, which is a graphic novel telling of his father's experiences during World War II and the Holocaust, in which the Jews are cast as mice and the Nazis are cats, and it's just supposed to be amazing and brilliant, and I need to get on reading those. Number two is Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. I love The Lottery. It is one of my top five favorite short stories of all time. And I love everything of hers that I've read, so this one is just something I need to get on reading. Number three, I've already read, but I want to reread, and that's Don Quixote. Uh, number four, uh, again, I've read it, I want to reread it, and that's Catch-22 by Joseph Heller. And number five is Wide Sargasso Sea by Jean Reese, just because I've heard good things about it. And I trust the opinion of the people that have suggested it to me, and I hope I like it as much as I think I will. Uh, number six, favorite modern book or series based on a classic Gonna be the Triella here of Victoriana by Felix J. Palmer, which I have gone on and on about. These are books based around H.G. Wells novels, Time Machine, War of the Worlds, and the newest one is uh, based around Invisible Man. And anything to do with H.G. Wells and the Time Machine, I'm gonna leap on like crazy. That's why I love them. Number seven, your favorite movie or TV series based on a classic. I have four of these. Number one is The Old Time Machine, which stars Rod Taylor and that amazing time machine with the velvet seat and the very, very steampunky looking, honestly. But it's it's a really cool remake, and I love that. Uh, the second one is Little Women with Liz Taylor starring as Amy. Third one is Little Women with Women, well, Little Women with Winona Ryder starring as Joe. And the fourth one, completely out of character with the answer to number one, is Bride and Prejudice. Yes, I do not like Jane Austen. Yes, I do not like Pride and Prejudice. However, this is a Bollywood-style musical retelling of the story. I love Bollywood. I love musicals. And I love Aishwarya Rai, who stars. So, of course, this is brilliant. Uh, people who don't like Jane Austen still will like the movie. And if you like musicals, Jane Austen, 
at all, you're going to like this. And for those of you who know about Bollywood, this is not actual Bollywood. This is Bollywood style. Uh, it's by the woman who did Bend It Like Beckham. So the, all the musical numbers are very Bollywood. Um, it's, it's styled that way. But it is not like four hours. It is a one and a half to two hour movie. And um, if you're one of those people who just can't watch four hour movies, you're missing a lot, first of all. Because there's a lot of cool movies that are that long. But that's an aside. It's a good movie. It's not as long as most Bollywood movies. You'll like it. Uh, number eight, worst classic to movie adaptation. That would be The New Time Machine that came out in the early 2000s. I hated that movie. I'm going to give it a rewatch at some point just to see. But for now, it is my worst adaptation. Number nine is favorite editions you'd like to collect classics in. I have three of these. I don't want to collect the entirety of any of these collections, but there's at least one book in each of them that I want. Um, the Word Cloud editions, there's two or three. Um, the Puffin and Bloom, I only want Little Women. I don't really care about having the others. And the third is the Penguin Drop Caps editions. There's four or five in there that I wouldn't mind having because they're very pretty. But if I don't and I get them in regular editions, it won't crush my soul. Um, yeah. So number 10, underhyped classic you'd recommend to everyone. I have four of these. Uh, going in order of how much I love them least to most. So Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I really enjoy that book and nobody ever seems to like it. Number two, Scarlet Letter. Again, nobody ever seems to like it, but I kind of really like that book. The third uh, is Grapes of Wrath, which I just had to reread a couple of years ago for a women's studies class on women and feminism and images of women between the end of World War II and the end of the end of World War One and the end of World War II, uh, which was an amazing class. And I realized just how much I loved Grapes of Wrath when I had to read it for that class. It's an amazing book. So there's that. And of course, number four will always, the best, the top of the heap for me is The Time Machine. And nobody ever talks about The Time Machine. Look at the series, right? So I think the Word Cloud editions, I'm almost positive they have a 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. Um, I'm... They may have War of the Worlds. Um, if they have an H.G. Wells, it's War of the Worlds or Invisible Man. Nobody ever has a time machine. Ever. And I think it is just the most underhyped classic sci-fi ever. Um, no matter how much people talk about, oh, H.G. Wells was amazing, they still don't read Time Machine and they still don't talk about it. If anybody knows where I can get, number one, a good, beautiful graphic novel retelling of Time Machine, let me know, because I've seen a couple of them, but nothing I can afford, and some of them look crappy. And number two, one of these beautiful um, rebound classics editions like Word Cloud, Puffin and Bloom, Drop Caps of the Time Machine, let me know. Leave me a link. I mean, I'm a librarian. I'm trained to look for this stuff, and I still can't find one, and maybe I'm just looking in the wrong places. I will admit that. I'm not perfect. I may have just overlooked it, and if I have... Somebody let me know because I, of all the books I have, there's only a couple that I would want a really beautiful, you know, display edition of, and Time Machine is one of them. So I need that in my life. And I, that is all I have because I'm trying to keep it under the time that my phone decides is when I need to stop talking. So that's all I had for the classics book tag. I'm not going to tag anybody because I was not tagged in this, but if you want to do this, consider yourself tagged and please let me know below um, if you do the video I will absolutely go watch it so that's it and hopefully I'll be back in a day or two with another video probably talking about what I was talking about at the beginning of the video um, related to Andy Miller's year of reading dangerously and a short review of that book and talking about a lot of the issues he raises about reading culture and book culture in that book and that's all I had and I hope everybody is having an awesome week and that you are reading something that makes you happy. And if you're not, I hope that soon you find your new favorite book and I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye!